right now on Full Custom Garage. Master metal man Ian Roussel takes on a wild 1970s boonie bug. I've got this strange vehicle sitting around the shop. Victor comes in with these plans, and I've got the parts to make it happen. I got a, a nursery on a major highway in Los Angeles. We need to build some kind of marketing vehicle that we could drive around. But Ian's eccentric client isn't going to make it easy. And then I looked at it, I said, wait, I'm going to be driving a box around with my sign on it. I think anything could happen from this point on. It's got to be a spectacle. There's no rules. I'm totally into this. As the build progresses, Ian and Victor try to take the project to the next level. I was thinking of, hey, I'm going to throw a wrench in the fire on this guy. But Ian outthinks me. If he wants to push it to the limit, OK, I will. My friend Victor is not the typical car guy. I've built more things for him than I can remember. Everything from custom cars to architectural elements. Nothing for him is ever stock. Victor comes in and he's all charged up. He's got this great idea. He wants to do another project and it's a little different than what we've done before. I know you don't use plans, but I even downloaded a set of plans. I want <laughs> this thing just to be crazy. The other night I was thinking of a project that I need. I got a retail plant rental company. I need for my nursery to have like a little car spectacle, something that just something like people would see like, what the heck is this thing? If Victor wants a spectacle, he came to the right place. Yeah, I've seen pictures of this thing. I never knew what the heck it was called. So it's a little utility van, basically. I think the coolest factor about this whole build is it's like a 70s kit car, you know? And this is one of the things I've seen pictures of, but never seen one. When I brought it to Ian, I knew he would make this thing work. And they give you all the dimensions all and the, the specs. Dimensions. But remember, like everything we do, this means nothing. This means someone has built something like this, so ours cannot be like this. I think we're going to take these plans and funkify them. We're going to go full disco. I think it's going to be cool. I don't know what can we use. I don't know what kind of foundation or what is this. This bus that I have has already been shortened, so it just might work out perfect. Oh, dude. See, somebody already cut the whole thing in half. They That's shortened perfect, it. man. Yeah, no, I, now I get what you're talking about. This is a 1968 VW bus. So, Ian, I got one question. What the heck were you thinking when you bought this thing? What were you going to oh, do with it? Oh, this isn't mine. This is for another client. He's almost as eccentric as you. So, I mean, this looks like a crazy clown car, but we got plans. My friend Mark brought this down from Canada. He's got a project that I'm building for him, and I'm only using the external sheet metal. So we're using the leftover parts. I'm going to use the shortened chassis and modify it, and I just think it's really cool that nothing goes to waste. You're probably going to have to lengthen it, though, right? I think so. This is too short. The main thing with this chassis is that it's all intact. I'll lengthen it and just come up with a couple dimensions on the body. You come back when I get this thing all chopped apart, and we'll go from there. Let's cut it apart and make it into something better. I think anything could happen from this point on. He's got a set starting point, but who knows where it's going. And see where it goes. Thank you. That's enough. Go on. See that? It's like slicing a loaf of bread. Same concept, only bigger. This isn't like a beetle. This thing is heavy. It's obviously had the commercial vehicle in mind when they made this. It's some heavy metal. That must be why it was so hard to cut.
tell, this baby's got a lot of miles on it, but it's still ready for the road. It's our new flexible chassis design. It smooths out the bumps. This thing's ready to rock, baby. Fire it up. It's an old Volkswagen. I don't know what's going on. It rolls around, but it's easy to fix. That's the whole thing. The thing that's bugging me now is these snow tires. Picked out these tires and rims because they got that kind of old school look with the white letters. This is essential because, you know, you can start drawing your lines of what it's going to look like around the final tire diameter and width. So obviously it's looking like some kind of weird contraption. <laughs> Put a little something on it. Get us in the direction we're going. This bus was driving around on snow tires and some weird worn out radials. <laughs> So putting some kind of a custom rim and the low profile tires really adds to it. It's the typical hot rod formula. You know, change the rim and tire combo and it's a whole different ride. That's way better. And then I'm gonna cut the chassis and stretch it, figure out the wheelbase. But it's a good first day. I'll get this thing set up, talk to Victor when he gets back here. I think first things first, I've been looking at these plans and just trying to come up with a starting point the cool factor in this is that I'm actually building the body from scratch. It's a super simple design, but I haven't done this yet, and that's really the thing. Looking at the way this thing is constructed, it was built out of panels of foam and then fiberglass. But my idea is to build a perimeter frame, like a skeleton, out of one inch square tube. It's gonna be way easier for me to just frame this thing out. It'll look kind of like a bird cage, and then I'll skin it with aluminum sheet. The whole idea with this frame is that I can really gauge three-dimensionally what the rake is on these tires, how this looks side to side. That way it looks centered on the chassis. Once I have the wheelbase established, it's all about the roof height, the overall length of the thing, and most importantly to me is the angle of the roof and the angle of the windshield. This tube will represent the roof height. See where we're at. See, that gives it a definite rake. First order of business was definitely the look of a chop top. So the idea of the tail end being way high and the nose being pushed down, it's just, you know, that's the look. It already looks like a spaceship. It's a total moon buggy. I think I'm going in the right direction. You know, some kind of sci-fi cartoon, extraterrestrial vehicle. It's got that funky disco vibe. Those are the parameters. I used the engine hoist in the back, so I'll be able to raise and lower the rear roof height without having all that clutter inside. If I was building something right to the plan, I would be measuring. I'm trying to use the plan as just a baseline model and then mutate it from there. This is like drawing in three-dimensional, you know? If you had a CAD program and took it back to the Stone Age, that's what this is. You're out in the desert, thinking about weird stuff on a lunar landscape. You got the vehicle for it. So it's really not about measuring, it's just about checking it out. So I think the whole layout of this body looks great. I'm committing to this framework with the one inch square tube. The wheelbase has gotta be lengthened, so I'm gonna stretch out the chassis and to go forward from there. It's a unibody, so the whole body is a tube structure that supports itself, but as soon as you remove that other three sides of the tube, you only have the bottom leg, and it's just a springboard. So my idea is to just beef the whole thing up. Instead of a one by three rectangle tube, I'm gonna put a four by four square tube that's gonna go over both of these frame rails. It's gonna hide the mismatch in the, in the dimensions, and it'll be super strong. Hey, look, Ma, no chassis flex. Like a real frame. Now the suspension works instead of the thing buckling in the center. The projects I recently accomplished with Victor were like all out, just go for it. And he was on board, so I'm really just trying to do something that kind of makes him stutter a little. Make him rethink that, that crazy potential that I have to offer. If he wants to push it to the limit, okay, I will. This chassis is really coming along. The only thing I'm missing is the engine. My friend Larry's got a pretty hopped up dual carb VW engine. It's not just gonna be like a rolly cart, you know? It's a display. This thing's gonna pop wheelies. It's gonna do burnouts. It's gonna sound badass. 
Now that I got this thing pretty well along, I'm gonna go over to Victor's nursery and check out what's going on over there. I got a couple ideas that'll put this thing over the top. I don't really wanna tell Victor what they are. I just wanna see what he's gonna use it for. The whole deal here is there's a huge freeway adjacent to his property. So there's a gazillion amount of people that travel this corridor every day to and from work. The cool factor about Victor's setup here is he's always looking to get people to look, right? We've built these crazy sculptures, oddball furniture, this wild dinosaur thing. What this car is gonna be, it follows suit with all those other projects. This is only six feet tall and it's yeah. clear as day coming down the freeway. Yeah. So if we get something more like that, maybe eight, 10 feet yeah, up. Yeah, eight, 10 feet would be perfect. Instead of just creating like another sore thumb type of scenario, I think I can make something really cool. All of Victor's work trucks are like high-end paint jobs, super nice stuff. He's a car guy. I think this vehicle should fall right in line with what he's got going on something a little more special than just your regular work truck with a sign on it, right? Spending a little time here, it's got my plan cemented. I gotta get back to the shop and make this thing happen. My whole idea with this project is to make the car look twice its size. I think the plan is to make the sides fold all the way up and the, the, both walls will be signage. It'll be 10 feet tall, six feet, seven feet long. I want the rear to hatch up, and I want both of the sides to hatch up. And I'm just gonna use this six foot piano hinge as the dimension for the side door. I'm thinking signs inside and out. That way if you're driving around, it's obviously shut, showing off this cool paint job with a logo, but when you open up the doors, it's a giant billboard straight up. That swings all the way up, and that becomes an area for a sign too. It's like a sign. Now I'm gonna build out these two walls that will swing out. The whole thing with this vehicle is like a triple threat, right? It's driving around, it's looking so cool. When it's parked, it's doing the same thing. And then the sides fold up and it still drives around. So it's a quadruple threat. It does four things really good. This should flip all the way open. Aha! Uh -huh. Yeah, it stands up just like the back. So the thing that's distracting me is this is just a structure. This is all sheeted. Uh, the window's gonna be back here. So I'm gonna bend up some square tube, put in the window frame. I'm not making anything from other car parts. That's the typical formula. So it's really open for interpretation. butt it right up against there. The reason I made it out of this square tube is because it's all the same material, but it's also a bit of bracing. I'm gonna tag off a leg to that rear corner, and that'll help keep this door squared up through the most severe terrain. The whole thing is that it looks like it's moving, you know? You see a dancer and they're doing their thing, you take a still photo of them, they look kind of weird, not like a typical person standing there. And that's exactly what this thing's supposed to look like. I'm just gonna kick this back to here, and that'll be a support piece. The aluminum's gonna need something in the center. I'm not sure how I'm gonna rigidize that yet. I'm really starting to dig this thing. So far, it's kind of my wish list. Wing-a-dings, open. And then it's like ultra green, just like right here. Whoosh. I know Victor's mode, and I'm hoping he doesn't come in here and switch up the bill. I really like where it's going, but knowing him, it could just take a whole new direction. It's gonna be a roof rack up here, platform, so I want it to be strong. So I put in cross braces every foot Everything that I'm doing with this is blank canvas for Victor. I'm thinking there's gonna be something on the roof. I'm making it strong, a little rack, support the doors and whatever he puts on top. I think the last thing I need to do before I show it to Victor is create this uh, roof rack frame. The whole deal with this roof structure is to be strong. Victor has a track record of pulling off some stuff and I wanna make sure this thing holds together. The whole deal with working with this square tube is that I have a bender for it, it's lightweight, and I can move quickly. 
This is just gonna be on little legs. That'll hold it down. It's just a matter of, again, proportion. How tall should it be? This ring is just like a top surround that you could strap things off to should you need it. It'll have 10 stands with two little rails supporting it. And that's the story. Victor's on his way over, and I just want to show him one more thing as like first concept, and that's the front bumper. Reminds me of my days as a shepherd back in the Nam. Just gonna cut off these two ends, fuse them together. Hey, Ian, what's up? When I first walked in, as usual, more was done than I expected. I love the way you angle that thing. I've been thinking and dreaming about this, too, since I left. I said, I want to put, you know, kick the angle down. I didn't know it was going to be forward or backward, but you're reading my mind. Instead of the doors, like the plan showed, the whole wall is open, like that, both of them. That's and then amazing. it says yeah. ultra green, so let, you when know you park what? it, that's a sign. I was thinking of, hey, I'm going to throw a wrench in the fire on this guy. I'm going to have him make something raise up because I want my sign to show. And I come in, and you raise up the door, and you could my signs go there, so the guy like outthinks me. This was exactly the response I was hoping for. He was really charged up about it, and that's why I needed to get this thing to a full-frame skeleton. You got the whole concept, there's nothing to question. I got a dual carb 1776 hot rod motor from my buddy. This rear opens too, so you can get in here and throw whatever yeah. you want, so this yeah. all comes up. Yeah, no. So I, this, is, this is how it looks, it's open. There's just four pillars. And people could see it from farther away. But yeah, no, that came out crazy, yeah. The only, uh, looking at it, everything flows right on. How's this going to look with the windshield? Is this going to be too squarish? We talked about a few things, changing a few things, just round this a little. Change the window around, round off a couple corners. This maybe might have to kick forward a little. Victor's like quality control. He picks out the sore spot and remedies it. So I'm all on board. He says curve the front end, and I agree with it. Then it's a built-in little visor, and you got a visor already built in. The main thing I got today was the go signal. Victor came up with a great recommendation on fixing the roof line in the front, and that's it. There was no other improvements. I'm going to cut this pillar off and reposition it. It'll come back like this, and this will have a nice curve. It's identical to the roof rack. this half by one so I'll have the same side profile but I'll be able to jive this up at an angle that will splice in there and I may even take this and curve it because this is going to be like a curved panel so it's like a little privacy shield you know like blinders on a horse it's pretty spacey I think this is going to work this is actually going to taper that thing in a little bit more so it will have this little curved front to it but this wall is going to curve in and I think that works it's gonna come right around the corner like that. No hard breaks in it. Working with Victor, he's got a great sense of style. This window detail is a perfect example of that. I wasn't seeing what he was, but I think Victor made a good call. You can see that this looks great. There's like a very smooth surface. You're looking at the light reflections, and that's what I'm gonna to try to maintain through the whole thing. Up till now, this thing's been a skeleton, right? Just conceptual. I had a couple pieces of cardboard on it. Finally getting these aluminum panels in place, you see it. Three-dimensional thing. It's an object de-art. The whole concept here is simplicity. If I can just lay this on and it looks decent, we're done. I think this is gonna work. Close the door. 
So it's not gonna shut all the way because I still gotta finish the bottom edges. But the whole idea is to get this thing looking like a space shuttle. It's very thin. I'm screwing it down, which is putting little pressure points all around each fastener. The idea of a mirror straight body finish is no warpage, right? So I'm trying to figure out how to keep this material under control. Once I got one door skin put on, I knew this material was gonna work. I had to figure that out. The biggest challenge was in the nose. There was a lot more bent panels up front than there were on the sides and rear. The steel is going to be showing all through here, but two aluminum panels are going to meet on these corners. So I got to come up with a pretty clean design. The nose of that is going to be created in one piece, and that's a series of a number of bends. It's going to come out of the windshield frame, turned down. It's one inch out, one inch down, 24 inches pitching forward, eight inches down, and then one inch back. So this thing should snap into place once the sides are trimmed out. So now I can mark where it's going to fit inside this upright. By bending one panel up, it just gives the nose a nice smooth look. Trying to minimize the amount of exposed seams. No lapped over joints. And then I'll just finish the edges up. I like everything about this. These look a little cheeky to me. Looks a little like the Godfather. That's the only problem I'm having with it, that round bumper and those little jowls. But all in all, it's, yeah, this is what I was looking to build. Just in time for Halloween. It's gonna be great. I always got a bunch of stuff going on. A while back, I worked on this project with my friend Stone. He called me, he wants me to come by and help him set it up for a show he's got coming up. My name is Stone and I am a metal fabricator and sculptor and I build big, ridiculous things for festivals. The initial concept is a series of sculptures that Stone did. It's called the One-Eyed Monster. You know, the original state of the One-Eyed Monster was these small little sculptures that I used to hand make out of steel. And they were just little sculptures that I just kept showing in galleries. He says to me he wants to build the most gigantic One-Eyed Monster sculpture ever, a driving 30-foot tall sculpture. Because I'm going to tell you right now, I know Ian and I know myself, like if, if there's any kind of thought in our head and it was like, oh, that would be cool, Literally the next morning, we will be not drawing it out. We will start building it. So this is below the decks of the One-Eyed Monster, where all the uh, mechanics and engine maintenance guys hang out. This thing's a full mutant. It's a 28 Ford Model A frame that I put a Mercedes-Benz rear clip, independent rear suspension, with the engine and transmission, and then it has a Chevy truck front axle. One of the biggest, craziest reactions that I get, with, besides what it is, I mean, it's obviously like, wow, what is that? That's weird. But when you tell them that it's an actual car, and, it, and or, or you don't even tell them nothing, you just get up in it, you start it, and you start driving through a crowd, and they're like, what the? You know, and you're like, exactly. All the stone sculptures are like a spherical body, and to make it proportional to what he wanted to do, he had to build like a 16 or 18 foot diameter sphere. It's all aluminum flat bar rolled on edge to create a series of like pie pieces that form this huge sphere. Ian's part, like one of his big parts is like more of the stuff that you don't really, I mean, you see it, but it's inside the car. And that's transferring all of the controls from, you know, a four foot range up to 14 feet in the air and actually make it functional. You drive it kind of pirate ship style. It's this huge A-frame, you're 15 feet off the ground, so all the controls and the steering are upstairs. So we made two lenses for the eyeball uh, in the same way I was doing the bubble tops and taillights on the other projects. For these, I just made a round oven. We used the same barbecue style thing and uh, just blew these circular ones as to stone specs. You know, he knew what the diameter of the eyeball was gonna be. And we just made a ring and a backing plate and inflated them. It is actually kind of complicated because it's colored, but it's translucent. You know, you don't want to paint something because that, during the day it might look great, right? But at night, that will not look that great 35 feet in the air. You need to light it from behind. So even though this looks like it's all painted, it's actually totally translucent. So any light will penetrate any of this paint. We created our eye socket 
out of like stuff that we just made here in the shop. Putting this thing together is a lot of effort. It's a full day setup, but the real reward is the sun sets, you get up in the cab and you're cruising around. I mean, just that, it's a really cool vehicle. It's totally fun. It's worked out perfect. It's exactly what it needs to be. And that's a spectacle of this crazy thing that no one else has ever seen. He's got the 30-foot one-eyed monster car, and I helped build it. My whole mission with Stone was to help him realize his vision. And it's the same thing with Victor. I set up all the puzzle pieces for him to bring it all together and, and make his vision come to reality. I'm really happy with the way this van is shaping up. Last couple things to wrap up before Victor gets here is a few minor details. I set up these wheel arches and rocker panels all in steel. And the last thing is to just clear and some out so that it steers. I want a really tucked look on these tires, but I don't want them to rub. See, it hits the bump stop just as it hits the tire. So I'm gonna finish up the wheel arch with this uh, 3 16 round rod. That's what these grooves in the rollers are for, different size wires. You just crank it through and it makes a perfect even curve. So that's pretty much the story. I'll just do that to each fender well. And instead of having this uh, flimsy metal with a sharp edge, now you have a nice rigid thing with a radius in it. But enough of the work. I want to get into the fun stuff. I cut up a bunch of pieces of wood flooring. It's going to be a simple plywood floor and uh, gas tank cover. The idea is this is removable, so all the mechanical stuff is easily accessed. You can get to everything. The thing about Victor is I know he's going to want to go wild on this thing. I just, you know, I've been around him long enough. I know what his brain is thinking. And, uh, Giving it to him in this raw condition, I think will leave a lot open for opportunity. If it's up at his place and he's looking at it every afternoon when he goes back to work, I think it's gonna progress into a way more developed state than if he's coming here with requests. This is more than a simple art piece. It's more than a simple stage prop. It's an actual driving boonie bug. So it's gotta steer, it's gotta go gotta stop. Five years old, all over again. This is perfect. One more thing. Let's put together a seat. So this is the stock driver's seat from the bus. And this base is just way too tall. This is gonna be more like a motorcycle seat where it's just a thin pad. You know, you're not hippie and out across the country with this thing. What this has done is give me one piece to fit up in the van instead of having a whole assemblage of tack welds and everything else. It's a bunch of square tube. I'm gonna spin it up into the shape of a seat and put some wood on it. That's what I'm thinking. Sort of like that. That's what I was talking about. Looks good, super strong, super simple. What do you think, Hellhound? You on board? Huh? What do you think? Look into my eyes. The whole idea with these wood inserts is it'll be easy to upholster. You'll see the metal frame, it'll be painted, and then these wooden pieces will just pop into place with foam and fabric on them. The idea is when you get in the vehicle, you can see it's pretty, it's pretty comfy. Somebody's a little shorter than me, their knee can be anywhere in here. Uh, there's headroom. It's actually pretty cozy. See, in this seat, it's exactly what I imagined. I'm really happy with it. I think it's a keeper. So my next order of business is to get the rest of these body skins at least, if not permanently installed, at least very mocked up so that it looks like a box, and then hook up the controls and drive it. Hey, man. Just finishing up the last bit of this stuff. Good to see you. I fleshed out the interior with wood, made a seat. All the controls are hooked up. Yeah, no, that's perfect. And it looks like it's really comfortable too. Yeah. And it adds to the flow. There again, everything's flowing just the way I like it. Victor came in and checked out the seat I made. 
right on the money. He didn't have anything to say except yes. Now you can see the way I fit in it. There's headroom for me. Yeah, no. If you're laying back yeah. and it's just enough. I got the steering all figured out, the clutch works. Brakes. Yeah, that thing's gonna be a trip. It'll Rubble. do wheelies, right? For a one-man operation, what this guy does, I come in every couple of days and it's holy shit. This guy must not sleep because he did three weeks worth of work on this thing in a couple days. That bitching in front, I love that. Now, practicality, I mean, you know, we're gonna use this, go with the theme of the 70s and we're gonna use like the shag carpet now. Maybe we, what are we doing? Maybe some kind of ice chest or some kind of maybe other seating or maybe fishbowl, who knows? I mean, what the hell? This whole thing started as like a utility cart with some signage. And Victor is really excited about my design and he's wanting to take it next level. Everybody's gonna look at it, man. I put it out in the parking lot just to see, and yeah, it's a total eye catcher. You know, it's one thing standing five feet away, but from the other end of the parking lot, it looks like a little space shuttle sitting there. Well, that, Pretty and then weird. once we throw these crazy colors on here and these lines, I mean, we have to, we're, I'm, I'm talking 70s, man. I'll get you some bell bottoms, and then we'll, we'll be back at it. I'll just put 10 million screws in this thing, start it up, and I'll bring it over to your place. Probably right, be two good. days. All right, let me know, and I'm ready for you. My boys are ready. Cool. Yeah, I think it's going to be a good one. Larry says the engine's a turnkey runner, so I just kind of did my little thing, made sure the carburetor linkage was free, the fuel pump was doing its job with the fuel, and just kind of checked the oil and made sure it was ready to rock. I'd like to take one moment to thank you, Mr. Larry. It's a great engine. But uh, yeah, it's a turnkey motor, just like he said. Before delivery, uh, Victor requested that I put a rear bumper on it. This thing is going to Victor's for all the finished bodywork and paint. Uh, he set up a punch list for me. He wanted a dashboard, a rear bumper with a trailer hitch, put an exhaust on it, and just finish up the paneling and headlights. And I guess he's got some kind of garden carts that they'll pull around with this. So he asked for a simple trailer hitch. Doesn't have to be super duty. I just set up that crossbar that hits the old, well, what you'd consider the frame. And the whole thing with this cage is I'm not welding the engine in. See, it's got little sleeves, so. These are welded in, and then there's a bolt that holds the whole thing together. That looks perfect. Well, you might remember my friend Bill's famous scrap pile. So I found this chunk of steel. It just had a giant hole drilled in it that fit the trailer hitch. It's easier to cut this thing off, believe it or not, than to drill a new hole through this heavy material. It's like you're at the store, they have those little uh, racks for the impulse buyers. Bill's whole backyard is like that for me. When I welded this big old plate on there, it looked terrible. The whole idea is making it look cool, right? A little weld, little plasma cut, it's a winner. Custom trailer hitch. Once I put the headlights in, you could see, you know, it had the face, it's a happy car. These are like early Volkswagen bus and bug headlights. That was the whole thing. It was a VW kit car. I just like Volkswagens. I could work on a million Thunderbirds and it's like, see ya. You know, everybody's got their thing. This is a hand-built Volkswagen powered toy car. I mean, it's beach buggy and that's cool. That's what gives it the character, man. Look at that, that's a happy car. It's like, Victor loves the project in this stage of finish. It's a blank canvas to him. You know, I was really concerned with the actual fleshing out of it, the building, and now it's time to get down and finish it up. All the interior details and then the paint. In an emergency, you will be warned. <laughs> This van is gonna be sitting around outside year round. It's not gonna be garage kept. So the air filters are directly exposed 
need something to keep whatever water out of the carburetors. Came up with a simple design to cover the top. It looks kind of like a little race car wing. It shrouds the side of the engines. You know, if you're driving by sprinklers, for instance, it's not gonna go down the engine and ruin it. I guess the whole thing about this is it's a handmade piece of art, you know? Everybody's gonna dig it. Little kids, old ladies, it just looks like a giant toy car. It's gonna get a ton of attention. It's gonna make people smile. Victor's got his guys going for it. I guess he's got the buggy painted and he wants me to come over and check it out. Just like any custom paint job, this thing's all taped off. I guess he's done a lot of line work and everything. I can't wait to see it. It looks like it's totally 70s style. Remember I told you we're gonna do this big old marketing thing. As I looked, I said it's gonna be market, marketing tool, but it's still gotta be cool. I started looking at it and then I was thinking 70s and the core. I went beyond what I needed to do for being a nursery golf cart slash marketing tool. I took it to the limit of what it was. Instead of being just a square box, I said, wait a minute. I need to throw some lines in here. It needs to sparkle. It needs to be cool. You know, everything we feel got to be one off, one of a kind, and over the top. We got three colors, silver, gold, green. We're still gonna put a clear coat on it, and inside the clear coat, we could add shades of pearl or metallic. Victor is talking about some kind of panel paint job, you know, something 70s inspired. So as we start peeling back the tape and the paper, he's obviously had somebody who knows what they're doing lay this thing out. It's a pretty intense graphic, and I'm digging it. And I had my buddy, Bob Koslick, an awesome pinstriper. He came in, I gave him some thoughts, and he ran wild on this thing. And the only thing I'm wondering is, paint looks so good with patterns, where's the sign gonna go? Just like you do to me, I have you do something, you change it up on me, I'm doing the same to you. We're just peeling tape, peeling back paper, looking at it, and we unwrap it, there's no signage. I thought we were making a custom sign, and all I see is these wild line graphics. I was thinking about that, and I was waiting for you to ask. Remember, the doors open up and the sign is there, but I had a brainstorm where, you know, the buggies have this whip with a big old sign on it. So it's something that when you're driving, the sign's moving, and I could go up five foot, 10 foot, 20 foot. This project started as an advertising scheme, and he's ended up with this crazy doom buggy van thing. I still wanted a sign, but I needed the car or the vehicle or it to be cool. The it has this flag with my nursery ultra greens on it, and people are going to go What is it, you know? Right, sure. So and I just say it just a nit. This thing is kind of an off-road vehicle at heart. And I think the idea of this flag banner thing is great. If you're out at the dunes, you're required to have a flag. And hey, it's representing the company. That's pretty cool. Not only do they look to see the sign, they look to see this cool looking vehicle and say, well, what is it? Well, it's a net. I don't know what Victor's talking about. I don't know what it is. This thing's a boonie bug for 2014. I'm totally on board with it. He's got a great idea for the sign. Now it's time to just do the finished details. So to wrap it up, it's a typical process for Victor. He's got his interior guy, Lino. He's done all his projects. The guy's an ace, and I think he's gonna be the guy that takes the interior over the top. Then I said, okay, this is natural. This is a golf cart. This is a nursery cart. We need indoor, outdoor carpeting. So I said, hey, Lino, can you put this as carpeting? And he goes, well, yeah, he can. I think working with this AstroTurf might be new realms for Lino's career here. I guess Victor still is on the whole Ultra Greens kick. I mean, he wants this to be representing the business, so he's got like AstroTurf inside, still carrying the green metal flake theme inside with vinyl. All the elements are in place, and I can't wait to see what happens. From the onset, I knew we were building something with four wheels and an engine, and he just took it to the next level, typical Victor style. We had no idea what this thing was gonna come out to be. It's beyond my expectations. It's not a show car. The little nursery car took it to the next level. This thing gonna be all dirty and in the mud. He lucked out with this engine. This thing rips. Everything has held together great. It runs great. 
I almost wish I didn't have to give it up. <laughs> I was really getting attached to this thing. Being able to drive it on its inaugural run was really cool. Performed perfect. I think Victor's going to take this thing more places than the nursery. So in addition to the paint, Victor went all out on the interior. He's got custom vinyl interior, two-tone, special seat, gold and green. He's got a custom steering wheel. They put AstroTurf inside instead of carpeting. I mean, this thing's looking good. It's buffed, polished, the sign is on. This thing is a rockin'. It's great. Our first idea was like some kind of a wagon with a billboard on it. But you know what? I got signs everywhere. But the car itself is going to make the statement and we just added the signs on and you could take them off. Really shows that Victor's idea was a good call in the end. This thing holds its own just sitting there in the parking lot. It's got the same colors as his fleet, fits right in with all of Victor's work trucks. The reason why me and Ian hit it off so good is he's creative and we're just started. If this was just a, a small project, then he's up in his game and he's looking to build something incredible. I can't wait to see what's next.